To many people, estrogen is a dirty word. Estrogen is often called the, the female hormone, when in fact it's a, it's a steroid hormone, just like testosterone and uh, cortisol. It's, a, it's in the family of steroid hormones. And um, it's, uh, although it's, it's produced in much greater quantities in women compared to men, men do produce estrogen. Uh, estrogen is an important hormone, and, uh, and it's engendered a very bad reputation. And there is bad sides to estrogen. For example, estrogen is the only human hormone that is officially classified as a carcinogen. In other words, estrogen has, has a definite association with the onset of certain cancers, including breast, uterine, and, uh, and, and some people will suspect that it's strongly involved in the onset of prostate cancer in men. Uh, the, uh, testosterone, no other hormones show a, such a direct connection to cancer. But this doesn't mean that estrogen is an evil, nasty hormone. It does a couple of important things in the body. Uh, it's involved in many systems in the body, including the immune system, the vascular system or the blood vessels, the neuroendocrine system, which is the hormones, the skeletal system. Estrogen in men is essential for modulating libido. Uh, to quote a, uh, the conclusions, of, of, I'm quoting from a study now, it said that estrogen, estradiol, that's the main, uh, uh, there's various kinds of estrogen I'll describe in a minute, but estradiol is the main, uh, let's say, most potent form of uh, estrogen. It's called estradiol. Estradiol in men is essential for modulating libido, which is sex drive, erectile function, and spermatogenesis of the production of sperm. Estrogen receptors, as well as aromatase, which is the enzyme that converts androgens such as testosterone into estrogen, uh, are abundant in the brain, penis, and testis, organs important for sexual function. In the brain, estradiol synthesis is, is increased in areas related to sexual arousal. In addition, in the penis, estrogen receptors are found throughout the corpus cavernosum, which is the spongy tissue in the uh, penis that allows men to get erections with a high concentration around neurovascular bundles. Low testosterone and elevated estrogen increase the incidence of erectile dysfunction independently of one another. In other words, uh, being low in testosterone or low in estrogen can cause erectile dysfunction. A lot of men don't know that. It's something to think about uh, to, to a lot of the athletes who use aromatase inhibitor uh, drugs or Navidex. These are drugs that actually uh, inhibit estrogen and they can cause estrogen uh, deficiency uh, symptoms. I'll talk about that a little bit later. In the testes, spermatogenesis is modulated at every level by estrogen, starting with the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis, followed by the latex, sertoline, germ cells. The latex cells are where testosterone is synthesized. The sertoline cells are where sperm is synthesized. And finishing with the ductal epithelium, epididymis, and mature sperm. Regulation of testicular cells by estradiol shows both an inhibitory and a stimulatory influence, indicating an intricate symphony of dose-dependent and, and temporarily sensitive modulation. So that's a, a quote from um, uh, a study that looked at the effect of estrogen on male sexual function. Now, as I said before, estrogen works through uh, uh, two distinct receptors. And now, androgens such as testosterone only have one. There's a one androgen receptor. All your anabolic steroids, testosterone, they all work with the androgen receptor. However, estrogen has two uh, receptors. One of them is called estrogen receptor alpha or estrogen receptor A. The other one is estrogen receptor B or beta. Now, an interesting thing is they found that uh, estrogen receptor A, a couple of years ago, they found that estrogen receptor A actually has anabolic effects in muscle because uh, it seems to stimulate the proliferation and development of muscle stem cells called satellite cells. So that's another reason why you got to be careful about reducing estrogen if you're working out or trying to build muscle. If you reduce it too low, it can actually affect uh, your muscle recovery and rate of muscle, muscle growth because it, uh, it, you know, it, the uh, estrogen receptor A is, is uh, not being uh, uh, activated, and this will cause a, uh, a decrease in the activity of these muscle repair and building cells called uh, satellite cells. The four main types of estrogen, there's four main types. The one is called estrone. Estrone is the major, uh, let's say, postmenopausal estrogen. This is the type of uh, estrogen uh, produced in women after menopause when their ovaries start working. It's uh, produced mainly in uh, fatty tissue, 
through the actions of, of the aromatase enzyme converting the androgens in a, in a woman's body into uh, estrone. So estrone is the primary, let's say, older women's estrogen. It's uh, much less active than estradiol. Can't remember exactly. It's something like a, a quarter or a half as active as estradiol. Uh, the other, another form, uh, of course, is estradiol itself, so often called E2. Estradiol is by far the most potent. Uh, you can call it the uh, chief or main estrogen. Then you have estri estriol, which uh, can be made in the body. Uh, and then there's a rare one called es estetrol, which nobody ever talks about. Quite frankly, I don't even know what estetrol does, but it is one of the four estrogens. In fact, most texts don't even list it. They only list the other three. So that, that's something that I have to kind of study a little bit. Estradiol is the most abundant and biologically active type of estrogen in women, younger women, or women of reproductive age. The ovaries are the main producer of estradiol in the body. Uh, and the uh, uh, and a lot of uh, the I think it's um, I think I don't remember the exact figure I think it's two thirds of the estrogen produced in a woman's body occurs through the aromatization of androgens such as uh, DHEA and testosterone uh, and this occurs in the ovaries so testosterone is actually the precursor for estrogen production which again occurs through the action of aromatase converting testosterone or other androgens into estradiol. Uh, some some uh, estra, 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 estradiol itself is produced directly in the ovaries. Uh, uh, it's not produced from uh, testosterone. Estradiol is found in both women and men, although women, like I said, have much higher levels. Although estrogen is an essential hormone, having too much estrogen can increase the risk of certain chronic diseases, including breast and ovarian cancer. The condition is formerly known as estrogen dominance. In other words, women who are overproducing estrogen, particularly estradiol, as I mentioned earlier, that's the only hormone that's considered a carcinogen. Uh, they are, are at much greater risk for having these type of cancers, breast, and, uh, breast ovar and ovarian and endometrial cancer. All are estrogen-related uh, cancers. Diet can, influence, diet can influence estrogen metabolism and excretion in the body. Having excess body fat can increase estrogen levels and disease risk as fat tissue produces estrogen. Why? Because aromatase, that enzyme, again, that converts androgens into estrogen, is found uh, in great abundance in fat tissue, particularly in the per peripheral areas, your arms and your legs. So if you have a lot of body fat, you're going to tend to produce more estrogen. That goes for men and women. This is the reason why older women who have more body fat they 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 much less risk of uh, getting osteoporosis, which is a bone thinning disease related to a long term lack of estrogen. The uh, the women with more body fat, the older women, don't get that because they're producing that estrone, which I mentioned earlier, and that's enough to keep their bone mass so they don't slip into osteoporosis. The women that get osteoporosis are the women the women the much smaller women with much uh, lower levels of body fat, who usually have very small bones. So they're only, I call them I. I use the expression bird-like. They're very tiny little women with little tiny bones. Those women uh, are much more prone to getting uh, osteoporosis. Uh, it starts at age 30. Uh, and, uh, and again, the, the chief reason for that is a uh, lack of weight-bearing exercise along with a deficiency of, of estrogen and minerals involved in bone uh, metabolism such as calcium. Uh, many studies have found that Western-type uh, diet patterns characterized by high intakes of red meat, processed foods, sweets, dairy, and refined grains are consistently associated with higher estrogen levels. You know, you might notice that uh, all those foods uh, contain one thing in common, fat. And there is association between intake of saturated fat and higher estrogen levels. So that's the common denominator. A review of 32 studies found that a Western dietary pattern high in red and processed meat and sweets was associated with a 14% increase of breast cancer in breast cancer. In contrast, the diet rich in fruits and vegetables was associated with an 18% reduced rate of breast cancer. After menopause, when the ovaries stop producing estrogen, fat, as I said earlier, fat tissue becomes the major source of estrogen in women. The more fat a woman has, an older woman has, the more estrogen she produces. And if she still has uh, intact artery, uh, I'm sorry, ovaries. And a uterus, it, you know, it does uh, increase her risk of getting cancers in those organs. Although, as, as I said, estro estrome is far, far less active compared to estradiol. 
So it's probably not a big issue, really. One type of eating pattern, in case you're wondering, what's the type of eating pattern that helps maintain healthy estrogen levels? Well, one of the best is called the Mediterranean-style diet. This diet is characterized by being rich in fish, vegetables, fruits, and legumes, and it restricts or limits foods associated with elevated estrogen, including processed and red meat and high-fat processed foods. A 2006 study followed 115 women on a Mediterranean-style diet for six months. The diet was rich in plant protein and, pl and plant fat and low in animal proteins and animal fats. The women followed the diet, who followed the diet experienced a 40% decrease in total estrogen level, 40% decrease compared with women who made no dietary changes. Fiber-rich fiber diets like the Mediterranean diet tend to be high in compounds called phytoestrogens. Uh, example, two examples of um, common phytoestrogens are, are the isoflavones, uh, which is diatazin and genistein, found in soy. These are phytoestrogens. They're called phytoestrogens, and there's other types of phytoestrogens, but they're called phytoestrogens because they're structurally similar to estrogen, but they're only one ten thousandth of the, pot of the potency of estrogen itself, but they can modify estrogen metabolism. Uh, these, uh, the, they're found in, again, foods like soy, uh, legumes, nuts, grains, fruits, vegetables, and seeds. Again, uh, phytoestrogens can bind to estrogen receptors, can bind to estrogen receptors in the cells, and can have either anti-estrogenic or estrogenic effects depending on how much you use. And if you take in large amounts of soy, for example, because of the uh, isoflavones in there, which are phytoestrogens, theoretically uh, you can start to get estrogen-like symptoms. Uh, for example, let's say a guy. There's a case on record of a, a guy who was drinking something like two gallons a day of soy milk, I believe it was, and he got a case of gynecomastia, which is basically male breast formation caused by an imbalance between androgens such as testosterone and estrogen in favor of estrogen. It stimulates estrogen receptors in the breast and you start to develop breasts. Uh, you know, that's a, uh, that, that could happen with excess phytoestrogens or excess estrogen production in the body, such as, for example, if you took a uh, anabolic steroids or testosterone that are able to be converted into estrogen. If you took too much of them and you didn't do anything uh, about it, like take an aromatase inhibitor or a drug or something like that, uh, then you're going to have estrogen effects. And most bodybuilders are aware of that. So they use drugs to offset the estrogen capabilities of these uh, steroids. Um, again, such as ar aromatase inhibitors, an example of which is aromadex or an anastrozole. Or else they use something ca called uh, tamoxifen citrate, uh, which has the trade name of Navidex. It works by blocking estrogen receptors, whereas the aromatase inhibitors, as the name implies, work by uh, uh, basically killing off aromatase, blocking it. Without aromatase, the androgens are not converted to any great extent into estrogens. Uh, research shows that fiber-rich diets, uh, that's another thing you do, by the way, fiber-rich diets. Fiber literally, dietary fiber actually can lock onto estrogen and pull it right out of the body. I know it sounds weird, but that's the way it works because research shows that fiber rich diets, such as those foods, uh, the fiber rich foods, such as hot, uh, whole grains, may help reduce estrogen levels and protect against certain cancers associated with estrogen domination. Whole grains are packed with fiber, which may reduce the absorption of cholesterol. Given that cholesterol is a precursor to estrogen, this may reduce circulating uh, levels of estrogen in the blood. In other words, if you uh, lower cholesterol uh, uh, or, or help the body get rid of cholesterol, and the only way the body can get ri rid of cholesterol is by uh, you know, basically sending it to, uh, to the liver where it's basically broken down into bile salts and excreted uh, as bile. Uh, there's no way of burning cholesterol. Yeah, that's the only way to get rid of it. Uh, HDL does that. High-density lipoprotein uh, produced in the liver, travels in the blood, locks on to excess cholesterol, brings it back to the liver. The liver turns the cholesterol into bile, and that in that way, uh, cholesterol is lowered and also excreted. You can't burn up or oxidize cholesterol like you do with body fat. Uh, those who follow plant-based diets, it's another way of uh, dietary way of controlling, uh, uh, controlling estrogen and cholesterol, actually. Those who follow plant-based diets also show lower estrogen levels because of the fiber-rich content of fruits and vegetables on such diets. So 
What about uh, supplements that uh, that lower estrogen? Uh, a couple of them are often on the market. Uh, I I'm not sure how effective these are, but uh, basically, uh, one way to uh, in both men and women, one way to uh, lower estrogen without doing any dietary changes is simply to reduce body fat levels. Because as I said, uh, the aromatase enzyme is, is very rich in, in uh, fatty tissue. And the less fat you have, the uh, the less excess estrogen will be produced. So just going on a diet and losing body fat alone will help control uh, estrogen. So that's about it for this particular topic. Uh, if you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, fat loss techniques that really work, anti-aging research that you can use today, uh, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, women's health and fitness, and many other topics. There's no other, uh, to my knowledge, there's no other digital publication that covers as many varied topics as I do in applied metabolics. And also, to, again, to my knowledge, there's nobody in, in, on, on the entire planet that is publishing a digital publication related to exercise and nutrition and health that has my uh, degree of experience uh, over the years, which is 58 years. I don't know of anybody who could match that. None of them, are, uh, very few of them are also have a professional writing background, which I have 45 years of professional writing. So all of these are features. And of course, I also include in the newsletter my personal experiences, which is anecdotal, but can still help because it affects a lot of other people. In other words, the mistakes I made in my training, well, you know, what to avoid so you can make the best gains without injuries, uh, the best way to train if you're a little older so you don't hurt yourself, uh, the, the, uh, the best uh, diets to promote muscle gains and lose body fat. All of this is included in applied metabolics. You won't find this information anywhere else. There's no, they're not on any websites. They're not on any blogs. There's certainly not any books that I know of they're, they're because you can't, again, you can't uh, match the level of experience I have over the years. I've learned a lot of things, and I include it all in the Applied Metabolics newsletter. So subscribe today at www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where every day I post new studies and information on nutrition, exercise science, general health. Uh, that's, again, only for uh, current subscribers of Applied Metabolics. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only, I don't accept unsolicited questions, can send me short questions related to anything they read in the newsletter. Or, by the way, newsletter kind of irritates me. I shouldn't have chosen that as a name. Because, you know, when you think newsletter, you think of something like a two-page piece of crap that doesn't really give you much of anything. But my, my newsletter averages 30 to 50 pages every month. It's like getting a monthly ebook, so it's hardly any, uh, I call it newsletter, but it's more like a, uh, I don't know what to call it. I guess it's kind of an ebook. It, it, it's very, very in depth, very in depth. So, but you know, uh, like I said, if you uh, subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook group. You're also welcome to leave comments under these videos, including suggestions for future videos. However, I'm sorry that I won't be able to answer questions uh, uh, that are listed in the comment section because I just uh, I, I have a, a certain amount of time, and I just the only time I have available, I prefer to give to my actual subscribers rather than just general questions. Uh, the subscribers support my work, so in my small way of giving back to them, I will answer their questions, uh, but I, I don't have time to answer. You know, if anyone wants to leave questions under the videos and somebody else answers them, that's fine with me, but I, I stopped doing that. That's no longer my policy. I, I will not answer any uh, questions uh, listed under videos. Uh, so, you know, just telling you so you don't waste your time. <laughs> so again, uh, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, you go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Take care, and thank you for listening.